Hey everybody. So um, I've been asked for an update on this. Um, uh, I promised I would do it, so here we are. Um, you know, probably a couple days late, but you know, better late than never. Um, that said, um, I uh, I got a message from somebody before we went on a, a, on a trip. Um, decided to order the. I looked at them before. Uh, it, this is just you know, brief story on this. I looked at the the, the the thing I'm talking about here is an SI 5351A. I looked at these before. I don't know why I dismissed it. I I guess I was looking at the performance of this versus the performance of uh, Direct Digital Synthesis, and the Direct Direct Digital Synthesis had a lot more strength. So, so I said, okay, I'm just going to go with that. Um, so, you know, I. I, I was just, I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to go with it and, and move on with life. But then somebody, you know, I got an email and said, well, for the application, the, the 5351A should work just fine. And then I got to thinking about it and I said, okay, well, I'll go and um, uh, I'll get a couple. I looked around, you know, I, first place I usually hit eBay, um, you know, to look for a little, you know, cheap one hung low boards like that. But, um, then I looked, something told me, uh, just from a hint on an eBay, that uh, Adafruit had them. So I was like, okay, I'll get them. I'll, I prefer to, to, to use Adafruit. So they had them. Um, and so I got a couple, like eight bucks or something like that. Not, not really too uh, expensive. And so um, I got them. They sat over here in the, uh, you know, when I came, when we came home from holiday, I didn't have any time. They sat over here. Uh, you know, in a box where all my mail goes, and um, so I just sort of let it uh, let it sit, and then somebody asked me about it, so here I am mucking with it. Um, what I have done is uh, I am generating the P the VCO frequency right out of that, and I've got the schematic here on a tablet. And I can show where I am injecting. Uh, this particular signal so I don't know how well this is going to show up there's a schematic it's a redrawn one from the Euro radio guys it's a great schematic I, I, I like it so here's L20 so there's your VCO output you got a 100 ohm resistor going this way and a 100 ohm resistor going this way um, there's the coaxial cable that is right here. That's this coaxial cable. So that's going up to the receiver. Um, I'm not interested in doing that. Um, this is going over to this one going down is all going over to the transmit mixer, um, which is an IC right about here. Um, so I'm injecting it here at TP1. I've disconnected this pin on this transformer. Um, now I left this PLL running, so this PLL is running, and it's just happy thinking it's running. Um, you know, and, and, and it is. If I measured the pin, I would see whatever I've got this thing set to. Um, you know, I would see that. What, so the pin is just sort of sticking up in there like that. It's, it's not touching, it's just sort of sticking up and floating in the air, and I'm injecting on that same pad my signal from um, the SI uh, 5351. So, you know, a bunch of code in here um, to do that. It's actually not for the faint of heart. Um, it, it, took me, it took me a few hours to figure it out. Let's put it that way. Um, and that's the irony behind this is because it took me more time to write the code than it did take me to conjure this up, this, th this up physically. <laughs> so that tends to be the problem with this. Um, the code takes up all the time and the electronics doesn't take up any time. Um, story of my life, um, especially with the stuff that I work with, you know, as a software developer. Just the code takes up all the time, the electronics doesn't, nope. Um, that's so, the sort of straightforward part, unless you get into timing stuff. Um, you know, then you got to be a little bit careful about it. But we got so many modern tools nowadays that even that doesn't matter. But um, anyway, so the concern that I have with this and this um, 
I'm really on the fence with this. I need to look at this, look at this very carefully. I'm generating a square wave. Okay, now for those who don't understand the implications of this thing generating a square wave, I mean dumping it into a radio, is that the square wave is made up of infinite uh, sinusoidals, uh, an infinite number of them at odd harmonics. So, you know, you've got the third, you've got the, uh, the fundamental frequency and then the third and the fifth and the, you know, so on and so forth. And the third, fifth, seventh, ninth, eleventh. I have no idea because I don't have a spectrum analyzer. Got rid of them years ago because I never thought I'd do anything with RF ever again. And then I decided to tinker and then I, you know, put this stuff, you know, put this bench together over here instead of the one behind me, which is where I work at during the day. Um, you know, and I put this, you know, hobby thing together and I've been slowly populating it with... Uh, uh, with instruments uh, the only thing I don't have over here and I don't have over there either is a spectrum analyzer because that's not something I typically use um, but since I've been mucking with radios I kinda need to get one um, you know I got a signal generator um, just need to spectrum analyzer I think I'm just gonna get a Rigel and you know move on with life you know like an 815 with a tracking generator or something like that I'm just gonna get one of those and move on um, a spectrum analyzer without a tracking generator is dumb in my opinion, but they sell them. <laughs> so anyway, um, so I need to, I want to look at that. I want to see what I'm, I want to see really what's coming out of the tailpipe, you know. Um, is it passing through? I doubt it. Um, you know, I I didn't. I did some FFTs, and I didn't see anything that looked very ominous. But I really want to look and and see what what's really coming out of the tailpipe. Receives fine, transmits fine. Um, you know, it's it seems to work on the surface. It works, and I can I understand that it works just fine, and I can see that it works just fine. But you know, I I just need to make sure that there's nothing sinister lurking around out there. Um, you know, and that would be whatever's coming out of the tailpipe. You know, maybe I'm transmitting, you know, some signal, you know, at a, uh, you know, like a third harmonic, and the damn thing is, um, you know, uh, several watts. I don't know that. I doubt that highly, but, you know, when you're doing something like this, it's better to just make sure that, you know, it's okay. Um, because... If it's not, then I'm going to have to do some filtering of this. I suspect that I'm probably going to really just have to do some filtering. So, and that's fine. But I want to make sure that I filter that. So before I get any boards made, before I, because I started drawing this already up in Eagle, um, I'm probably what I'm going to do just because, uh, just to get a board so that I can put it in the radio and do some, you know, real like field tests. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the components in for some filters, and all I got to do is just um, uh, you know zero ohm resistor over the pads or something like that, you know, just to get it out to the edge of the board to put into you know the the RF into the radio. Um, but I suspect that filtering is probably going to be needed uh, just to make sure you don't get any nasty stuff out the tailpipe. Um, I haven't heard any word weird whistling or chirping or you know some people call them birdies in the receiver. I haven't heard anything like that, and I've pretty much stepped through, um, you know, by just turning the knob and just seeing where I'm just listening, and I haven't heard anything strange, um, you know, at any particular frequency. So again, a spectrum analyzer, I'd be able to see that. So um, that said. Um, uh, I figured, you know, since I've fired this up, I haven't really done anything other than just verify that it works. Um, you know, just uh, mucking around, you know, go to channel 20, see if I hear hear it, and, um, you know, see if I hear things and see if people hear me. And I actually went to channel 19 and uh, with an antenna and asked somebody heard me, and they heard me, oh, yeah, it sounds just fine. So I got an on-air report. It works. Um, so, you know. I was, I'm, ha I'm happy with it. So, um, the, 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 the kind of, you know, uh, shits and grins now is how, 
how far can I go with this? Um, because I don't think I did any experimentation with that. So these encoders, this, this one that's going to be the clarifier, I can change the step. So just for grins, I'm just going to make it one megahertz steps. Um, that's channel 20. I transmit on the radio. Um, okay. Wasn't squeezing the microphone good enough. 27205. Well, actually 27204999 or something like that. But, you know, good enough. Um, that's 28 megahertz. 2820502. Good enough for me. Um, 29 megahertz. Uh, 29.205010. So, yeah, it probably drifts a little bit. Um, I have no idea how much, uh, you know, how much it's going to drift, but, uh, it seems to be changing a little bit. Um, and uh, as far as output goes, I'm getting 500 milliwatts at 29.2 megahertz. Um, 30 megahertz is probably pushing it. Well, no, I'll be damned. It actually works at 30 megahertz. I'm getting, oh, uh, I don't know, 50 milliwatts out. It's, it's really, you know, it's going to taper off. Um, this radio wasn't designed to do what I'm doing with it. Um, and it hasn't even been aligned, so it's probably um, just going to, it's going to, you know, the receiver, I bet, I probably wouldn't hear a soul at 30 megahertz. It just wouldn't hear anything. Um, so let's go to 25 megahertz. Um, wow, I actually got a couple of watts at 25, 25.2 megahertz. So let's see, that's the, the thing right there is I've got more power um, down below. Uh, lower frequencies like see I'm still you know 600 milliwatts at 24 megahertz so there's a little there's more power um, there's more power down on the bottom than there is at the top um, I can guarantee you the receiver is probably not going to work um, but um, just for grins I got a little speaker here let's um, let's hook it up and see what we get let's try the receiver out so that should be 27.205, so let's plug in a signal generator and carrier frequency 24.205 and turn on the carrier and RF level negative 144 dBm. I don't think so. Let's let's start easy. Let's go zero dBm. Um, I've got no modulation. Let's give it some modulation. There we go. Let's turn that down, and let's just crank the modulation all the way up on the generator. It sounds funny, but this speaker is crappy, so, but it sounds funny. In fact, yeah, it sounds weird. Um, and the S meter is like barely moving, so I, I bet that, um, I bet that it's not happy, really. Or there's other crap coming through, you know, that's my concern is that there's other there's there's some bad stuff coming in this square wave you know well I know there's harmonics I know there's lots of them so but it sounds you know iffy so let's just for grins let's take the radio back into its normal range let's go to um, 27.205 and it sounds just fine so yeah um, I bet it's just at the bottom. Um, I bet that we're, it, we're we're pushing the receiver beyond um, beyond its operating range and certainly beyond its alignment range. Um, I bet I could probably align the thing and it work at 24 megahertz just fine um, with an alignment. Um, I bet it would work. Um, I'm not sure. 
how sensitive it would be compared to you know 27 megahertz but I, i'm willing to bet that it would be fine so let's just do 26 megahertz 0.205 um let's see what we got it starts to sound a little funny there too um I hear some. I don't. I'm sure that's not coming through the video. I I I hear something. Um. But you know what? That's why we have oscilloscopes. <laughs> you get this stuff off of here. This is why we have oscilloscopes, folks. Let's see what we got coming out of there. Come on. It's not wanting to cooperate. I've got the right probe, too. So, oh, for crying out loud. I don't know what's up with this. It just, it looks, it looks sketchy, too. Yeah, there's something on it. There's something on that. You know, it's, you know, it's a hundred, it, it's a, um, you know, one kilohertz tone on there according to the scope, but there's, there's something on it. it it's, it's funky looking. So, um, I'm sure that I'm getting something through here. But anyway, it works. Um, it's going to need some tweaking, obviously. Um gonna have to probably filter out some some nasty harmonics out of this square wave um, I mean as much as you probably can so what I'll do is um, I'll draw all this up I'll get a couple boards uh, stuff them put it in the radio um, and I'll um, I'll go do some filter calculations and you know see where that takes me and um, not not really um, uh, not really uh, up on my analog stuff. It's been a really, really long time. So I'm just going to have to probably pull out some books and I'm going to have to to remember those formulas because I just don't remember those formulas. So um, I'll get some filters going and um, give it a go and see what I can come up with. So I don't know. I hope that this was entertaining. Um, even if... Uh, you know, I was blaring a little uh, one kilohertz tone, and you're probably in your ears for a little while. Um, it seems fine within the um, normal range of the radio. It seemed fine at 27 megahertz. Um, 26 megahertz, it started, it started to sound sketchy. 25 megahertz, it really sounded, you know, sketchy, obviously, or whatever it was, 24 megahertz, wherever I was. It, st it just sounded sketchy. And at 26 megahertz, there's something there. Um... I don't, I don't know what it is. Um, I'm gonna have to break it down and actually look at it and see what kind, of, what kind of crap was riding on that, um, on that tone. So, anyways, um, hope it was interesting. I hope I get some good feedback on this. I uh, hope that uh, uh, this is, uh, of course, interesting to people. Um, you know, to see me uh, try and maybe fail at this but so far the results are promising uh anyway guys uh that'll be all i'll catch you guys next time